Today we won't be coding, I will be uh, talking or rather rambling about inherited widgets and uh, so if you don't like that feel free to skip, it's going to be very theoretical. Mm. I think it's important to have a deep understanding of the tools we are using and that's why I decided to record this uh, video. So inherited widget explained. Inherited widget is simply a widget that provides data to other widgets. Class, a widget that holds data and uh, makes it available to other widgets. It's important to clarify the vocabulary. So when we say inherited in this context, it means that the widgets below can inherit the data. It's not related to the object inheritance at all. I don't really like the name inherited widget. And I prefer the name provider. It's just simpler and uh, more straightforward. So another important point I'd like to focus in to be sure that you understand it well is tree. So we have two kinds of trees, maybe more. Real trees and computer science trees. So in real, real trees uh, grow from the bottom to the, to the top and the root is at the bottom. And the leaves are grow, you know, the branches and the leaves grow up. In computer science, it's different. The root is uh, at the top and it grows down. And the leaves are growing down. And he here in this example, we have the leaves are widgets number one, two and three. And the root is this uh, red uh, widget. Inherited widget is... Uh, its function is to provide data to other widgets down the widget tree. Uh, but why, why do we really need it? So let's take as an example the application we are building. And here we have uh, like a simplified uh, version of, the, of our widget tree. So we have the app. We have also other widgets like, uh, you know, material, scaffold, all that. And so far we have three screens, messages, contacts, and there is an empty calendar screen and right now we are focusing on this contacts part and we have some widgets and eventually we have a list of contacts and then we have a counter which is the number of contacts currently displayed on the screen. Both those uh, widgets and those subtrees they need to access this, this we could say the same piece of data. In our case it's the same manager. The idea is now to think how we could make it so that those two places have access to the data. One solution would be to place the data somewhere at the point that it could be accessed from both places, from the list and from the counter. So for example, putting it in the contact screen in the place where we are assembling both the list and the counter is a good candidate because we could then pass the data through other widgets and make it available finally to those two widgets we that are interested in the data. The one problem with this approach is that we need to pass the data through potentially through other, through other widgets that are not interested in the data because the only way to pass the data is by using uh, constructors. Remember that in Flutter, the widgets tree, it's, um, it's a description of the UI to be rendered. So it's a so-called declarative approach, which means that we use the widgets to describe what should be eventually uh, displayed on the screen. That's also the reason you cannot like, put the data at some, in some location and then reference it, because the widgets will be rebuilt and they will lose the reference. The only possible solution is to pass it through constructors. Each time, if we nest the, the widgets and the most nested widgets need the data that's somewhere uh, near the top, we need to pass the data, we need to add a parameter to each constructor in between to uh, pass this data so it reaches finally the widgets uh, that are interested in the data. So it's kind of cumbersome to, to do it this way. So is there any other way to do that? And yes, there is another way to do this, which is by using inherited widget. The idea here is that we wrap a widget, in this case the app widget, and we wrap it in inherited widget and then we pass along the data we want to share. It's now possible uh, for the other widgets in the tree to access directly 
this inherited widget. We can then access its data. By using inherited widget, you can skip the, the whole tree and you can access directly the inherited widget. So ideally, you would place this widget at the very top, at the root of your application, because this way you would make access to your data possible from any other widget in your tree. At the same time, it's, it's a good idea to centralize, to put the data in one place, to have a unified state. But you can also use several inherited widgets for like a uh, part of your tree. So for example, you, can, you could wrap contact screen or any other widgets so that the widgets below have access to the data if that's something that's uh, more uh, convenient in your case. But in this uh, course, I will encourage you to use inherited widget, which wraps the top widget. So there's like a single place from which we will be accessing data. It will be long term, it will be simpler to manage. How exactly it works? In order to create an inherited widget, the inherited widget needs two elements. The first one is the data you want to share, you want to provide to all the widgets down the widget tree. And the other element is the widget which will be wrapped by this inherited widget. So it will be the widget that below which the data will be available. So for example, if we wrapped one of those blue uh, squares, only the widgets below them would have access to it. If we wrapped, in this case, the red circle widget, uh, all, the, all the widgets will have access to the data provided by this uh, particular uh, inherited widget. So having done that, how we can access the data from the widgets uh, below? It's possible thanks to a method called inherit from widget of exact type. And this method is uh, available from the context. So context is a parameter of, of the build method. So in every widget you have access to the context. And context describes the, uh, it's a reference to the location of your widget within the widget tree. So once you have the context variable, you can use this method to reference your inherited widget from any other widget in the tree. And um, there is this um, convention in, uh, in the Flutter community that instead of using this long uh, method, you can just create an alias called off, and it's a static method. Inherited widget is immutable, which means that once you create it, you cannot change it. So you cannot change its data, you cannot change it, it's the widget to which it's attached. It's, uh, once it's created, it's over. The data will be always the same. Now you have two possibilities. There is the light side and the dark side. And in this tutorial, I will be uh, using the light side. But first, let's focus on the dark side which is uh, the mutable approach of using inherited widget, how it really works. So because inherited widget is immutable, you, uh, if you want to change the data within that widget, you have to create a new inherited widget each time so that the widgets that depend on it could use it, so it could display the new, uh, new texts or new counters or whatever is there is in, in the data. And the only way to create a new inherited widget is to wrap it into a stateful widget. Because if we uh, wrapped it in a stateful widget, then we have access to set state method. And the set state method will uh, trigger the rebuild, will allow us to create new instances of inherited widget. If you want to create a stateful widget, you need to use two classes. The first one is the the stateful widget itself, and then there is a private class, and the state that comes with this widget. So in this case, I have a widget called provider, and then I have state for this provider. And then this state provider inside the build method, because as you remember, the build method for a, for, for a stateful widget is placed inside the state class. Inside this uh, build method, we will be creating new inherited widgets whenever there is new data available. This will happen when uh, something invokes set state inside this uh, state class. As you can see, the scenario is, it becomes really complicated already because we 
need at least three classes. In order to make it work, it's similar to using just inert widget. You need to pass the widget, which will describe the location where you want to uh, place it. And then inside the state, you will place the data you want to share. And then you would have to share this data from the state with this inherited widget and create a new inherited widget. So it's kind of, um, I don't really like this approach. Uh, it, it seems a little bit complicated, but it's understandable because that's the only way to, to get the new data, to propagate the new data to the widgets that depend on it. There's no other way. And there is an important uh, thing here that if you are passing the widget to the provider, to the stateful widget, this field will be marked as final, which means that if you pass it to the, then to the inherited widget, whenever inherited widget is rebuilt because of a, of a set state call that happened in the state, this won't rebuild the whole tree below because the tree will be only rebuilt if the instance of that widget changed. But in this case, it won't change because once we pass it in here to the provider, this uh, instance will be fixed for, uh, for this stateful widget. So we don't have to worry about uh, the fact that whenever you are rebuilding the, in the inherited widgets at the very top, all the other widgets will be rebuilt as well. This is not true. This is especially important if you are planning to put this widget at the very top and you are worrying about the fact that the, the, your whole application will be rebuilding. Well, no, it won't because uh, the instance, the widget instance will be fixed when we are creating this stateful widget. But still, this is the approach which I think is, should be rarely used and uh, there are some plugins that uh, use this approach. There's a plugin called uh, Provider, I believe, and there's another plugin called Scoped Model, which uh, uses uh, something of that sort. And uh, so I encourage you not to use this approach. In my opinion, there are better approaches. And in this, in this video, I'm hoping to convince you to, to use them. So the problem with what I was describing is that um, you are managing your state manually. You have to worry about, you know, whether should I change it or not, etc. It's it's a lot of uh, responsibility on your side, and you have to be very careful to to be sure that the data is being uh, first propagated in a, in a good way, and then it's refreshed uh, the the way you want it. But there is more problems to that. If you are using this, uh, let's say, dark side approach, this mutable approach where you are rebuilding the inherited widget, there is an important uh, thing you should know that whenever you're accessing the inherited widget from the widget below, you are subscribing this widget from which you are uh, invoking this method to, uh, to changes, which means that Flutter behind the scenes adds this widget to a list and then when the inherited widget is replaced it will check the list and it will notify all the widgets that are subscribed. So just by the fact of accessing the inherited widget from the top, from any other widget below, you are subscribing this widget to changes. So that's the kind of like a first thing you have to worry about or be be aware. So this is part of me rambling. There is this thing called um, big O notation. So this is a way in, in computer science to tell how good, let's say, an algorithm is. Uh, I, I encourage you to read about big O notation, but I'm mentioning in that because in the docs they say that the method to access the, the inherited widget is O1, which means it's constant, which is very good, which means that this is probably a map. But that's not all. So still, uh, we are in this, in this scenario where uh, we are mutating, we are creating new uh, inherited widgets. And so beside the fact that whenever you are using the widget, you are subscribing this widget to, the, um, to a list of, of changes, there is also another method you have to override called update should notify. And this is the method that is defined for the inherited widget. 
and this is a way for the instance to tell if the data is different. So let me clarify. So you have one inherited widget and then you are using this um, wrapper, the stateful widget around to replace this widget, to pass it new data. So now you, Flutter allows you through this method to compare the previous data you had with the previous inherited uh, widget instance with, with the new data you are passing it. And at this point, you can say if the data is uh, equal, it means the data didn't change, you can skip going through the list of those subscribers already. So this is the place where you can control, uh, for example, should I uh, trigger changes to the, all the subscribers, all the widgets below that referenced me or not? And uh, you can do it only at once for all widgets. You, you, you cannot really choose. So for example, if there is a part of data that changes, that it's only relevant to one of the widgets in the list of subscribers, you have to pass through, but all the widgets will be rebuilt, which is not a very effective way of doing things. You should be only concerned by this if you are using this mutable approach, which means that you are creating new inherited widgets. It seems that inherited widget doesn't conform to this uh, single responsibility principle, because at, at one hand, it's a widget that provides data to other widgets, but on the other hand, it does things like subscribing to a list of changes. So it's kind of like it does a lot of things behind the scenes. In this tutorial, I, will be, I won't be using this, this approach. I'll be using an approach where we will be creating an inherited widget once, and we will, which means that the data, once the data is set, it won't change. And, and you may ask, well, how you will account for the, the changes of the data? Instead of passing the, the actual data to the inherited widget, I will be passing uh, services to this widget. So I will be sharing things that know where the data is and when the data changes. And I will combine it with streams. In the previous episode, I was using manager. And I, I was passing the manager to the two widgets that need the data. And those widgets were using were streams from this manager. It's very similar to real life. I'm hiring a manager. I'm doing it once. It's always the same person. It's the same entity. And I don't have to manage changes. So I hire a manager and I say the widgets in my application, listen, that's the manager and that person will be uh, responsible for providing you data. And then the manager will hold streams to give that to the particular uh, widgets and the widgets then will be using those streams. Immutable means that instead of passing the actual data, we are passing a reference to entities such as services, managers, that know how to provide the data. And because those entities provide streams, widgets can uh, respond to those streams automatically. They can uh, consume the data and rebuild if needed, which is easier than, um, than passing it manually and thinking which changes should be applied and which changes, changes should be not. So this is the way of uh, implementing an inherited widget this is the way that we will be using in our application. So we will create this, we'll create one instance and it will be always the same. And the data will be our manager. That's the solution for the next episode. But eventually we won't be passing just a manager because there may be many managers. We'll be passing something else. But I will tell you about this in, the, in one of the future, I think it will be the episode just after the, the next one the architecture I'm planning to, like the, the final, final architecture we are going to use. I encourage you not to use inherited widget in its mutable version, which means that wrapping it into stateful class because there is a lot of problems that it generates. Don't use scope model because it's exactly the same, but it adds another complexity and you don't really need that. And all those uh, solutions, they require you to manually uh, manage the data. If you are using streams, this is already being solved for you. Whenever you are hearing the words such as subscribe, listen, or notify, and whenever you are seeing someone does it by, by hand manually, you should ask yourself, 
Why? Because those uh, words are exactly what streams provide you. And, um, and they do it for free, we could say, because that's something which is like inherently uh, like built in into, into streams. Here, as you can see, we, we, we had those methods like update should notify or there's a list of subscribers being managed by inherited widget or scope model. Or somehow we could say those approaches reinvent streams. And the question is why? Because maybe there are some like scenarios when this, this may be useful. But um, for most uh, cases, using streams, it's the most straightforward and the most simple way. And when we couple it with immutable approach, it's even better because we don't have to worry about all that stuff and it just works. That's pretty much it for me rambling today. And uh, in the next episode, we will go back to coding. See you next time.